Hey there, I'm Jane Sawyer, and this is Jane Sawyer messes up a paper mache pumpkin, but makes this cool cardboard jack-o'-lantern instead. This was not the tutorial I intended to share with you today. Previously, I showed you a three ways to make a paper mache pumpkin, and my intention this week was to take one of those pumpkins, add some paper mache to it, and make a creepy looking jack-o'-lantern. But in art, as in life, sometimes, happens. The original project wasn't going to work, so we had to pivot. I still think this pumpkin turned out pretty great, and I, I want to show you what happened. So let's start at the beginning with the paper mache pumpkin we made last time. To give you a quick recap of this particular gourd, I grabbed a paper bag, stuffed it with wads of packing paper, divided it into segments with masking tape, smoothed it over with more masking tape, made a stem, and then covered it all with a few layers of paper mache. It is now dry and we're gonna carve it up. You can carve this pumpkin just like you would a living squash. I like to use a marker to draw my cut line around the stem. I also put a little notch in there so I can line up the lid later. You can use a serrated steak knife to cut through the paper mache. Little teeth on the knife are great for sawing through the layers of paper. If you want a bit more surgical precision, a pen knife with a fresh blade is a good option too. I was switching back and forth between the two. Like if I got frustrated with one knife, I'd switch to the other. And I feel like that's a solid strategy. The great thing about a paper mache pumpkin is that when you get the lid off, there is no slimy mess inside. The masking tape from when I formed this pumpkin stuck to the paper mache, but it peels off really easily. I want to get the stuffing out of my pumpkin, so I've got to pull back this tape covered bag. Now I can wrestle all the stuffing out. Of course, I'm saving all this paper I pull out because we don't get rid of any good paper mache paper in this house. Now, I'm not the best at designing jack-o'-lantern faces, but Pinterest is lousy with inspiration images. I've created a board with the reference images that inspired this particular face. I'll leave a link to the Pinterest board in the description so you can find those references and click through to the original sources if you wanna. So I use my craft knife to carve out the pumpkin's face and it's at this point I realized that I had a bit of a problem. So you see how I'm having to put my fingers inside the pumpkin to support the paper mache while I cut out the nose? Yep, that's a good indicator that I messed up the paper mache portion of this project. So I've made a little bit of a mistake on this pumpkin here. This pumpkin is very thin and squishy. And that's because when I initially planned out this pumpkin, I was thinking I was gonna build a face on top of the paper mache instead of actually carving into it. And then when I changed my plans, I forgot to go back and put extra layers of paper mache on top. So I've just been kind of brainstorming ways that I could give this guy a little bit more strength. I have this friend, Wesley, who makes all this really cool card board art. He does really interesting things with corrugated cardboard. He doesn't try to disguise the fact that his art is made of simple cardboard. He kind of embraces that fact. I was thinking I might try a technique where I hot glue strips of corrugated cardboard onto this pumpkin to give it some strength and some texture and some depth. Kind of just winging it. Never done this before but uh, I think it's gonna be really cool. So let's do it. Hey, Jane from the future here. I wanted to mention two more artists who work with cardboard whose work I think you should check out if you are interested in this type of art. Josh Gluckstein makes these really huge animal sculptures using corrugated cardboard. I think it's super cool how he used the corrugations to make the wrinkles in this elephant's trunk. He's on Instagram as Josh Gluckstein Artist. I will leave his at and everything in the description. The second artist I want to mention is Laurence Vallier. They make wicked good sculptures out of cardboard. I'm just in awe of their work. You can check out more of her work at lovallier.com. Again, I'll leave the links in the description. If you are interested in building things with cardboard, I would check out these three artists. Okay, back to the show.
So you can see the ends of the corrugations here. I'm gonna put this up at the top of my cutting mat and cut strips of cardboard with the direction of the corrugation. If you're trying this project yourself, be mindful of the corrugations. There's no wrong way to do it, but if you cut the strips cross grain, it will change how your cardboard bends and folds. After cutting a bunch of strips, I ran them over a finger to break the grain. Uh, this hurt my finger after a while, so I switched to using the back of my crafting spoon. Then I cut some of my longer strips into random shorter lengths. I started with the stem. This seemed like a nice low stakes area to start with. I started by gluing down longer strips of cardboard, bending and curving them to follow the shape of the stem, and then I used shorter strips to fill in the gaps. For the body of the pumpkin, it was easiest to start with my long strips, fold over one end and tuck it inside the pumpkin, and then wrapped the strip around the body, trimmed it to size, and secured it with hot glue. To start with, I wasn't worrying about covering all of the paper mache, I was just getting some long strips down. After I worked around the back, I worked across the bottom of the mouth. I used my spoon to bend over my strips at an angle that matched my mouth and then glued those into place. After filling in with longer strips, I went back and covered any gaps with shorter bits of cardboard. Working between the nose and mouth was a bit tricky. I had to fit and fold each piece so it would wrap around the paper mache. I did a similar technique with the eye holes. Again, I started with long strips and then went and covered any gaps with shorter bits. In real time, this took me about two hours, which is like not a short amount of time. It looks so freaking cool though. I want to make a bigger one. I just want to cover everything in little strips of cardboard because I think it looks so good. I was not sure if I wanted to paint this guy or not. He looks so good as raw cardboard and there's no going back once you put paint on it. But maybe he would look even cooler with some color. So I asked TikTok and they said to paint it. And I asked Instagram and they said to paint it. So I figured I guess I better paint it. Being inexperienced in painting cardboard, I thought it prudent to make up a few test tiles to play around with. For the first one, I'm rubbing the side of a chalk pastel over the cardboard. I really like how simple this one is. It's rough and rustic. I like how you can still see the cardboard peeking through and how vibrant the color looks. For my second tile, I'm dry brushing some orange acrylic onto the cardboard. To me, this looks like a bit of a nothing burger. So I mixed up a dilute burnt umber wash and used a small brush to paint it around the edges of my cardboard strips. Ultimately, I'm not too excited by this one. It adds color, but no texture. It's just kind of flat. For my third tile, I'm just gonna throw everything at it here. I'm starting by painting on a black wash and wiping that off with a damp paper towel. You can see, unfortunately, the moisture from the wash has caused some of the cardboard to start to delaminate. I think this rules out using a wash on my sculpture, but nevertheless, we're gonna keep playing around. I'm brushing some orange on top of the dry wash, but you can see my paint is not very opaque, so it's looking pretty muddy. Thought I might bring back some of the color vibrance with some chalk pastel. In the end, this looks okay, it's a bit overdone for me. I think we've lost the cardboard completely and I don't really like that. Here are my three options. This painted one is kind of boring and flat. The black wash one is too overdone. 
I think I like the chalk pastel the best, so we're gonna go with that one. Or I actually was playing with this one off camera a little bit more, and I'm really starting to like how it looks with chalk pastel blended in over top. I don't think this looks too overdone. So just to show you the difference here, this is the one with paint underneath, and that's the one with no paint. Still really subtle, but it looks better than just pastel or just the paint alone. So I think we're gonna go with this one. Alrighty, you heard the lady, let's get painting. And there you have it, a messed up paper mache pumpkin that became some cardboard art. I think this looks cool as heck, and this is part of why I love making art. What started out as a mistake or a problem has led me down a path to something I really enjoy. Let me know if you wanna see more cardboard art on my channel, or if you have any questions. I respond to almost every comment I get here on my channel, unless you're a head complaining about the way I say paper mache. Give me a like if you think I did a good job at my first try at cardboard art. Likes make me feel all warm and fuzzy and they also allow more people to find this video. Subscribe to my channel if you're interested in more affordable and accessible art info. Follow me on the socials, go mess up some art today and I'll see you on the next one.